you would like to sponsor MECFS Alert, please contact us at mecfsalert at gmail.com. Help us to help you. Hello, I'm Llewellyn King of MECFS Alert. I'm here in the Senate um, of the United States at a hearing called by Senator Harkin on chronic pain. The reason I'm here is that the CIVIDS Association of America is one of the supporters of a coalition and one of the supporters of these hearings and a participant in a small way in these hearings. Why are they important? Well, we don't say it that way often, but essentially, in Washington, the Congress proposes and the agencies dispose. In theory, it's the President who proposes, but on specialized issues, issues like pain, issues of medicine in general, therefore, of ME, CFS, it is the Congress that may be more important than the administration. The Congress controls the money, and in many ways it controls the ideas. One of the big ideas that came out of today's hearing on pain was that there is stove piping, that education of doctors is out of date, and that the rigidities within the NIH and other institutions are such that across-the-board diseases are not getting an across-the-board look, either by insurers, physicians, or researchers. It's important to recognize that emotions can stimulate physiologic change. Um, I think it's uh, very important that we um, don't dissociate mind-body uh, when we talk about chronic pain conditions and put chronic pain conditions into strictly a in-their-head uh, psychological component. Well, there is no doubt that our emotions contribute to our physiology. I think that we have much work to do to uh, look at our approach to pain, just as we do other uh, neurological and psychiatric illnesses from a physiological perspective as well. I, I certainly don't deny that um, my emotional health or anyone else that suffers with pain affects my ability to effectively cope with both the physical suffering and the effects of pain on my life. Um, but while I was hit by a car and nearly died, my pain has never been questioned by any medical provider. But this is not the experience of the average pain patient in our country. The mechanisms and risks that result in chronic pain does not mean that it's made up in your mind and it's not real. There's a lot of people like you around the town. Uh, maybe not with a bullet in it, but with fibromyalgia, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, back pain, all kinds of things that, uh, that we just need to know more about. I mean, and we have to do more research in this area, but it has to be wrong. And I will continue to say that this whole area of mind-body cannot be just a footnote. It has to be integral to this whole search that we're doing on how to relieve so many people who have real pain, real pain. Not your head, it's in your body. We're coming from the body, but that's one thing I have heard from Dr. Sharma, that this is real physical pain. It's not in your head, it's real physical pain. Did I understand you correctly that there is a tendency to stove pipe too much in the medical profession and too much in the NIH? Not to look across the borders of a disease, but to look at it in too segmented a way? In, in the area of pain research, that is, that I believe that's, that's so, and I think the report shows that. And one of the things the report calls for 
is more of a, of a, of a cross-disciplinary approach to pain at NIH. Uh, that is in the process right now of being done. Uh, I intend to ask Dr. Landis, who's the head of the NIMDS, <laughs> National Institute on Musculoskeletal Disorders, uh, to, to uh, give me a brief on that and what she's doing to kind of bring those together. But yeah, I think that's, that's true. And are we behind in educating doctors? Do we educate doctors in a yes. very narrow way? Yes, yes, we're way behind. I, I, I think we, it, it, too much, too many doctors are just, it's just allopathic, allopathic medicine. And it's like a lot of things, you just, can, you teach what you, you were taught. Oh, absolutely. And you teach what they were taught, and so the things keep handing down. We need a broader approach. I see some of that happening, by the way. I see more and more uh, young medical students who are interested in integrative medicine. What are some of the other approaches? Uh, and they're doing this on their own. They're asking, asking, asking for this in their medical schools. Uh, residencies now, uh, that hospitals now connect up to residencies in integrative medicine to look at different aspects of medical care. Thank you very much. Okay. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.